for Happy Valley on Wednesday night. Welcome to the race by race preview with Paul Lully to look at the nine races on the B course and the first getting underway at 20 minutes to 7 o'clock with a class five over the 1200 metres. Rattan World is in good form. Colonel's been back to the trials since he ran sixth last time. Daily Trophy has the pacifiers going on. Nordic combined. He comes back in trip two. General Ace is a last start winner. Extra seven pounds on his back. Aviva Alar ran second to General Ace. He carries an extra five and Dewar Rider with a crossover nose band coming off. Aviva Alar not going to lead Paul with Colonel having a good draw in the race. Yeah, he's drawn three, Colonel. So, look, he didn't lead last time, Viva Alar, over the 1200. So I don't expect him to lead again. Uh, Young Horizon, he's another horse that's drawn well. He's drawn two. He likes to go forward. Wind speeder can put himself right there. And it's been a bit of money recently for Noir Ryder, and he's uh, raced too badly. Right down well, John Barry won, but unlikely to use it, he, he generally gets back. We start off with the winning form of General Ace, somewhat of a surprise winner. He was uh, not the rank outsider, but he certainly wasn't in the market at 21 to 1. This is the race where Viva Allah went back, and he still ran on well. So if they don't lead this week, you Set on the speed map, you don't think that's going to be a problem? No, I don't think it is. And the one thing with Viva Alara is uh, he races over every distance imaginable as well. He's gone right up to 1,800 metres, Viva Alara. So he, he, he has got that little bit of staying blood in him. I thought he ran on well. There's a bit of money for him here. I'm going to include Viva Alara in the race. I'd like to see General Ace do it twice in a row. He was a big prize when he did it that time. All right, and uh, both of them carrying some extra weight, more so the winner. Off to Shartin we go. Rattan World is in this replay. He ends up running third, and Devil and Gold makes up a bit of ground late. Can you make a case for either of this pair? Yeah, Rattan World, he was a winner two starts ago and backed it up with a placing, so he's been in good form recently, Rattan World. Both of them are at Shartin, but he comes back here to Happy Valley, so he goes in. Devil and Gold, yeah, look, I, I put him right, he was right on the cusp uh, for me. Devil and Gold didn't quite go in, but as you say, it was a better run from him and he did make up a bit of ground. So you wouldn't be surprised if he ran well. You can see Ratham well down the very outside in those red colours hit the line quite strongly. Happy Tango not for catching from the front that day. And our final replay, Paul, features uh, four horses here. It is uh, Nawai Rider running fourth, the Colonel sixth, Wind Speeder seventh and aged Ed Torbian who hasn't been able to back up a win from early in his career. He's down in Class 5 now, but does have a wide draw. Yeah, look, I like Colonel coming uh, here into Class 5. This will be his second start back in Class 5. He drew 10 here, so he had to work uh, to get across. He's drawn nicely in barrier number 3. Uh, Luke Ferraris is pretty good on these uh, front runners as well as uh, Colonel. Um, his last win was in Class 4 and he's in the Class 5, so uh, I think he can he can win. All right, so Ferrara still in the first. Yeah, I've got him on top there with uh, Colonel. Uh, he's a well-rated horse at the moment, so he goes on top. Colonel to beat Rattan well, Viva Alar. And I'm going to put Noir Ryder in. He's been running some pretty good races. He's been out and out leader, but uh, since they've been riding him back, he's been hitting the line strongly enough. 3-1, 10-12. Luke Ferraris and Ricky Yu on the bike early to win the first race at Happy Valley on Wednesday night. There is further Class 5 racing in race number two with an old favourite appearing this also. Yes, Medic Elite runs on Wednesday night. Jazz Club at the top of the book is on the class drop. Medic Elite hasn't been seen since the 7th of February, so he's had about a month away from the track again. Kuru Magic has the blinkers going on. Regency Happy Star has placed three from seven course and distance. Brilliant Pioneer is on a seven-day backup, and Mr Ram is down to a rating of 12, and he draws barrier number six. He's also a noted leader, Paul. Yeah, so he should go forward. Charming Steed's backing up from the weekend. He's another one that can go forward. Medic Elite uh, went forward when he won last start. He can get himself into a nice position. Brilliantly happy star, Brilliant Pioneer won't be too far away. A bit of last two runs from Jazz Club have been pretty good. I think he can sort of sit midfield and Stormtrooper likes to get back. Well, Medic Elite is in our first replay. He appears on television almost <laughs> as much as the MASH reruns does as uh, he wins, Paul, but he just keeps racing well, so you can't fault him. No, you can't, and uh, this will be 11th start for the season. He's already had a couple of wins. Look, uh, he's so consistent. Uh, as you say, he seems to back up, seems to thrive on his racing, so 
he'll go in uh, the numbers once again. I've got a couple in to beat him, but I uh, still think he's a, a chance once again. He's such a consistent horse and just seems to enjoy Happy Valley. He does. Hugh Bowman takes the rod on him. He's uh, trialled pretty well since. He ran seventh, but was under a good hold finding the line in that trial. We stay at Happy Valley for replay number two, and this one features Stormtrooper fourth, Brilliant Pioneer, Regency Happy Start, Charming Steed, of course, raced at Sha Tin and had every chance on the weekend. Big two comes up with a really good draw here. Harry Bentley rides him for DJ White. Yeah, charming seed. He's another horse we've seen plenty of. He's be his 12th start for the season. The, we didn't. We missed the start. That's that's where Big Two missed the start. And as such, he was really well back. It was a really good run for him once he he finished off this race. So he definitely goes in and uh, Stormtrooper as well. His last one was off 50. He's down to a 40 rating. So he's a very well rated horse. And the class dropper, Paul, is Jazz Club, who's had two starts for Manfred Mann, both in class four. And he's run fourth in both of them behind Ruby Lot and Parterre. Has had four goes at Happy Valley, but he comes here in a lot better form than what he did last time he was at the city circuit. Look, I put him in once last season as a long shot after um, race, running a really good trial. But he's just showed nothing last season. And maybe he's just taken a while to mature because both his runs back this season, particularly when he ran fourth down the straight 1,000, uh, have both been really good. So maybe he just needed time, this horse. Uh, he's been downgraded into Class 5 for the first time. And like the way he hit the line there. So enough to put him in the top four? Yeah, he's going to go in, go in as the Quinella horse uh, for me, uh, Jazz. Uh, club, so he, he definitely goes in. But the horse we're going to put on top here is Big Two. He was really unlucky at his last start. I think he can atone for that. Stormtrooper and Medical Elite. So around the top four for me. Four, one, two, three. Musical Quinella with a DJ. DJ White training Big Two to beat the Jazz Club in race number two for Paul. Race three up now on the race by race preview for the Valley on Wednesday night. Class four over the 1800 metres. Absolute sunshine is on the class drop and a gear change with a crossover nose band being added to him. Serangoon last start winner carries just an extra two pounds for it. Amazing Teens has the pacifiers coming off. First look at 1800 metres for Super Baby. Two infinities placed his only time, course and distance. Running ahead has the tongue tie coming off. And Kairos Unicorn has the blinkers going back on. So from the start here, Paul Super Baby goes forward. Good to slow. He'll be hoping more slow than good, wouldn't he, with a good pace maybe seeing him vulnerable over the 1800? Yeah, exactly. And uh, he, But he should be able to get there. V Love You went forward last time, but uh, faded. So I think he'll take the trail. Running ahead can go forwards. Absolute Sunshine is the downgrade. He should get a nice enough run. And Darcy Joy should get a really good run from an inside draw. Here is Darcy Joy. He's coming off a second last start over at Sha Tin. That was 2,000 metres, comes back in trip. He has won twice over the 1,800 metres at Sha Tin. Happy Valley hasn't been where he's been at his best. Can you see that changing here? Well, he's going to get every opportunity. He's got the, the good draw, barrier number one. He should get a, a nice soft run, three back on the rail. So if he is, is ever going to perform here at Happy Valley, this could be it. He's only been placed once from his seven starts. I'll, I'll include him on a minor line because he's, he's quite well rated and the distance is good for him. And uh, you can see he was almost won this one. He was just worried out of it late. He was. It's Kimberly who's just grabbed him and Starship 80 who's been in good form running third in that race. Next up, we've got Seren Goon who took a little while to acclimatise to racing in Hong Kong, but he has certainly done so. And his last three starts with a win and a couple of placings. Kairos Unicorn's been lurking around the money lately too. Yeah, he's the one I'm going to go with, uh, Kairos Unicorn the Grey. He's drawn three, so he should get an, another one that should get a nice run. Serangoon just, it just worries me a bit about the draw for him. Uh, he's drawn wide. Like it, it did take him a while to win this race, and uh, whether he can put two together, I'm not so sure, especially from barrier number 11. But see Kairos Unicorn, a couple more strides would have won that. He would have indeed. So that's that replay. Our final one is a horse that uh, we know much, much better on the all-weather in amazing teens. This is him running fourth last time behind G-Liner. He ran fourth behind Blissful Star two runs ago. We go back three runs to Happy Valley, and he ran second, beating the neck behind Red Hair King. Yeah, which looks good for him, because Red Hair King will probably start favourite in a later race, or one of the favourites. He's been catching the eye with his runs, uh, this horse, Amazing Teens. Now, he's off a rating of 55, and his last win was off 55, so he's more than capable. I've got him as the Quinella horse, actually. I think he, he could run well over the 1,800 metres, and he does like the 1,800 metres. And on the all-weather years ago, when he first started off, he used to lead. 
He hasn't been doing that recently, so I don't know if they'll change the tactics with him. We will find out. But uh, who do you have winning race number three? Yeah, I'm going to go with Chorus Unicorn. I thought a couple more strides, he would have won that uh, race. So he's on top to beat Amazing Teen. Stacey Joy. I'm going to put Royal Pride in. He'll get back. He'll be running on strongly. He's just got to overcome 12. 10 4 2 7. That is the preview for race number three. It is the first leg of the early treble. It's preview time for race number four, and the fourth at the Valley is over the 1,200 metre trip, with Harmony and Blessed having the blinkers off and the cheek pieces going back on. Atomic Force has placed four from eight course and distance. Colourful Emperor, he's placed two from three track and distance. Beauty Glory carries an extra nine pounds for senior rider Zach Purton gets on board this week. Mega Bonus has had just a couple of goes in class three and Romantic Novelist has the cross nose band and the tongue tie going on as he steps up to the 1,200 metres. Bit of pace in this race, Paul. Yeah, look, Harmony and Bless should lead. Uh, Colourful Emperor's drawn wide, so he might have to work to get across. Mega Bonus is drawn outside him. He likes to go forward, so it's good. It could even be good to fast, but I think it's probably more on the good side with a smaller field. Act of Faith, now he's got really good gate speed, but from a wide draw, he might just have to tuck in a bit. He has gone back in the past. We'll have more from Paul shortly. Firstly, though, Nick is here talking to Casper Founds, re Atomic Force. Casper, Atomic Force, one of your runners on Wednesday night at the Valley, um, went very close last time over this trip. You must have been sort of very pleased with the performance. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, he's only won a race for us um, last season. He's run a couple of good races, you know, this season he's going good. Um, I believe that. He's just understanding what we want of him. We've been trying to get him to settle for a long time. And if he does that, we're in business. Like, you know, he's got a decent gate in five. Um, it wouldn't matter where we went with him right now. We could go forward as long as he understands to respect uh, the jockey a little bit. He'll be competitive again. I guess with all that in mind, Casper, Harry Bent, he's obviously been a key component in all that, trying to get him to settle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's done a good job with them. And uh, the horse presents well, and there's no reason why he... Uh, Hopefully, can go one better than last time. You mentioned that that one and only win for you so far. That was a thousand. This is twelve. Last time was twelve. Uh, where where are we with his distance? I mean, his wins in France were down a straight twelve hundred meters, but he seemingly gets this six furlongs, doesn't he? Yeah, he does get the six. Um, like I said, this is about him how he is. If he behaves himself and is uh, tractable and doesn't over race, then the six is perfect for him at the Valley. He won off seventy seven last term. He, he confident you've got a, a couple of pounds in hand, perhaps, of his current mark. Um, yeah, he's, he's on his mark, but you know, like these types of horses, once they start to take it all in, they can hopefully rack a couple of wins up for the team. Uh, one horse that did manage to, to get that win is Sky Heart. Great to see you and Blake Shin team up again. He, he looks like a nice progressive horse. He's a very progressive horse. I've had a high opinion of him from day one. You know, we, we haven't had the best of luck with the three draws he's had. And um, I think you'll see the best of him once he gets a nice sitting behind the speed over 1400. And, even a mile later on, but uh, his next idea will go straight to 1400 and uh, hopefully we get a good gate where we can ride him a little bit conservative and, uh, and show us what he's got in the last part of the race. Blake Casper all smiles there after Skyheart winning on the weekend. Uh, we're moving on now, Paul, to the replay featuring a consistent act of faith. He's yet to win in this grade, but he hasn't been too far away. Mega bonus and Lightning Bolt finished down the track this night. He was uh, beaten six and a quarter but uh, drops five pounds off his back from this race. He does, getting down towards the mark. He's won on it in the past. But look, act of faith I'm going to put in. Uh, it's just where he ends up from Barry number eight. But he ran on strongly enough here for a placing, so uh, he, he goes in, but on a mine line. Look, he can jump really well, this horse, so we'll see where they end up with him in the smallest field. Lightning Bolt lucky not to fall there when he got squeezed up late in that race. Another pace angle is Harmony and Bless, too. We know well over the 1,000 metres, but his last few starts over 1,200 have been quite good. Beauty Glory ended up running 10th from barrier number five. Zach has won on him before, though. He has. Uh, look, Harmony and Blessed, I'm going to include. Uh, he's drawn barrier number two, so he should get the run in front. Just how much pressure he gets on. I think the, the one colourful emperor is going to have to just work a little bit to get across him. But those two can sort of dictate in front. Uh, Harmony and Bless has got Derek Lung and um, Angus Chung aboard. Uh, colourful Emperor. So as long as they don't go silly in front, I think they're two good chances. 
So are you going the speed to be spots one or two or the swoopers to run over the top? I'm going to go with one of the swoopers there and uh, that's the one we just talked about with Casper uh, Founds there, Atomic Force. Has one off a 77 rating, he's down to 73, so well rated and he's consistent. Uh, Harmony and Bless, Colourful Emperor, the ones in front, I just think he can, Atomic Force can come over the top of those two, an act of faith we talked about as well. Two, one, five and six. And that is race number four for a six-up punter. The fourth is the first leg. We step up for the fifth. It is a class three event and it's over the 1,650 metres with Gallant Waking. Trolled since uh, his last start performance went eighth behind Simply Maverick. We're slow out that night too. Winning Dragon last start winner carries an extra 11 pounds. Quantum Patch jumps up from the 1,400 at Sha to the 1,650 at Happy Valley. Red Hair King is in good form, so too is all beauty. And Charity Bingo's a last start winner. He does get a good draw as he comes back up into class three, but his best form is one grade lower. Star contact here, Paul Leeds. Is it a race where there's no natural leader? Yeah, so look, he's led in the past, Star contact, and he got away with it um, and actually won. So lucky eight, he's up and trip. He, he, he's a possibility. Red Hair King, uh, he's better in the trail. Uh, Gallant Waking, winning Dragon, doesn't like to lead Rocket Spade. It's only led once, it was in the Classic Cup from memory, one of those uh, ones races last year. All Beauty, Terry Bingo and Quantum Patch, they get back. Led in a trial too, leading into that race did Rocket Spade. Did, didn't went forward yeah. in the race as well, but uh, that's the speed map for race number five. Quantum Patch here, Paul runs a second. Better suited Happy Valley, his stats tell us. All Beauty, he's hard to leave out of the top four the way he's been going, certainly over 16.50 this season. Yeah, so he goes in. Actually, both those, these two go in with Quantum Patch as well. Look, he, he finished off behind M Unicorn really strongly here and all but won the race. So uh, he had to come off a slowish pace here as well. So, uh, look, he'll want a bit of speed, and I don't know if he's going to get it, but um, he, he's still got a good sprint on him. I've got to put him in, but I've got one to beat him. Winning Dragon is a last start winner, but uh, is going to have to lump so much more weight if he wants to go back to back. There's Red Hair King. Just handled this last corner a little awkwardly, but he too's been holding his form up in Class 3. And that was the, the losing of the race, I think, for him, because these three went to the, the line together. lavera has been in great form, and Winning Dragon got that perfect run. I think he's going to get a perfect run on this Winning Dragon from Barrier 9. So, as such, Red Hair King, uh, definitely the one coming out of this. And, look, he all but won it, didn't he? And uh, another, another stride, I think he was just about in front. Yep, great finish there. Charity Bingo is a last start winner. Can you see him going back to back, yelling Bingo again, or going oh, when someone else yells it out. Yeah, could well do that. Uh, look, I'm going to put him on a very minor line, but uh, he's up in this grade where he struggled in the past. He did get, again, another one that got the race run to suit. He's not going to get it to suit uh, in this contest either. So, look, he, he'd always promised to do this, this horse, and it's good to see him finally put it together in Class 4. Now, it's whether he can back it up in Class 3. But some, some horses can come up and do it. I've put him on a very minor line. How do you see Gallant waking because he's normally not too far away, but at 1,200 metres where he is a three-time winner. He's now broken through over the 1650. This is Helios Express in the purple colours in this trial. California Spangle, Helene feeling in the middle, and Cheng Cheng Glory is just to the inside as Gallant waking is in between horses there. Yeah, look, a nice enough trial. He is on an all-time high rating, though, uh, of 78. He's got to carry 135 with couple of progressive horses in this race, so he didn't quite make it in, but look, we know he does like Happy Valley. He sure does. So that is a breakdown of the runners in race number five. Who's on top? We got Red Hair King uh, on top here. He, look, he almost won the race last time. He's a very consistent horse. Quantum Patch, All Beauty, and Charity Bingo. I think we've talked about them all. Seven, four, eight, nine. That is a race number five preview. It's the first leg of the Triple Trio. Race number six is a class four race, and at the top of the book is a horse on the class drop who does love 1200 at the Valley. It's Solar Partner, E Universe. He just refused to jump last time. He's had two trials since. Ace Powers on debut. He has had four trials. Party Warrior gets the blinkers for the first time. Glorious Expert has the hood going on. The tongue tie is off. Super Eagle was a winner last start. He carries an extra five pounds for it. And happy feeling as the cheek piece is going on for the first time. Super Axiom here, Paul. He goes to the front, but you wouldn't want to be sitting on his heels at about the 200 metre mark. No, he seems to stop, doesn't he? But he, he's got it that early pace and he only knows one way. Yoda's Choice showed a lot of uh, pace in his trials before he came to the races. Zach Burton will stick aboard from Barrier 1. 
a super eagle. A solar partner should get himself into a great spot. Chair for South, he led last time. He might try and get outside Super XM, but I can't see it. He's pretty speedy, Super XM. He sure is. All of his form so far at the stage over the 1,000 metres, though. Newcomer here. Nick spoke to the trainer of Ace Power. It's Douglas White. Douglas White, Ace Power is a newcomer for your stable on Wednesday night. Um, what more can you tell us about him than what we already know from the trials? He's, he's looked okay. He's, he's a nice horse. He he's, does everything professionally. Uh, he hasn't put a foot wrong really since he stepped into my yard. And um, he's, he's ready for his first race. He's going to need this run. He's, he needs the experience and he hasn't been wound up. Um, he's, had, he's had enough trials and he's, as I said, he's forward enough to go to the races. Fortunately, he's got a a gate that's going to help him, um, but he, he's a thorough professional and he does everything right. On those trials, Douglas, I mean, he's he's obviously he looks as if he just takes that bit of time for, for everything to sort of you know work itself out. But when it it has done, he's he's worked home well, hasn't he? He has. He's, as as I've said, he's he's done everything professionally. Um, he is still raw. Uh, you've seen that in his trials, and hence the reason he takes a bit of time to wind up. But when he gets his momentum going, and when he does wind up, um, he, he moves nicely. He would seem, Douglas, as if he's had the full education, been up to Chung for a little bit. He's had the Happy Valley trial as well. Has he, has he come through all that quite, quite nicely? He has. He's, he's handled everything I've given to him. Uh, you've obviously seen that he's, he's been up to Chung for his trial there. He handled the valley very well, and I thought it was a good opportunity for him to start uh, his career off there. Uh, he seemed to go around the track well, and um, he hit the line strongly. Um, going back to the weekend, Douglas, you had three runners. All three of them hit the frame. Uh, the most notable, of course, was in the, the last, Blue Marlin. Um, just a, a word on him, because he's sort of developing into a little bit of a, a stable star and favour, I would imagine. Yeah, he is. He's, he's come a long way. He has been a, a handful, and it's, it's been a tedious job, to say the least, uh, having to get him where he is. Um, he, he's, he's, I wouldn't say he's a barrier rogue, but he's, he's, he's had a few issues in, in the gates and with the gates, and, um, you know, he smashed up his head before he even raced, so he's come a long way and he's getting better. Um, and he, he showed a bit of courage on the weekend with a heavy weight. You know, Hugh gave him, gave him a 10 out of 10 ride, he made the difference, but he still had to carry the weight and the first two drew well clear of the rest. And um, he stepped out every time and he's been ultra consistent. Um, just finally, and obviously another of your stable stars, Russian Emperor, um, we haven't spoke since, since he last ran abroad. Um, how's he returned? He's come back good, he's, he's in quarantine at the minute. Uh, I thought he ran a terrific race. It was three seconds, or three point something seconds slower than last year, and he came from last and he ran home and, and earned prize money. So I thought he ran tremendously well, and he's back now. He's going to have a spin round on the turf this morning. And um, look, he, he's healthy and he's travelled well. He, he loves travelling, so uh, it's, it's done him the world of good. He did. He had a bowl around on the course proper after the trials this morning, did Russian Emperor. Super Eagle, Paul, this was a much-deserved win last time. It took him a while to get the maiden win on the board, but uh, he managed to do it. Of course, he had won a couple of times before arriving in Hong Kong. Managed to beat Golden Long, who we see in a much stronger race later on the program. He's in this race, as is Ragnar. Yeah, look, Ragnar had the perfect run in behind, but still stayed on quite nice. He's, he's drawn a bit wider now. But, um, look, he deserved this win, Super Eagle. He'd been so consistent leading into it. It's whether he can go back-to-back -back now. We'll find out if he features in Paul's selection shortly because we need to talk about an improved type in country dancer who's certainly been better at his last few starts. A third two runs ago behind Happy Golf and then this fourth behind Joy coming last time. He had Barry in nine in this race. He does draw wide again. Yoda's Choice has been back to the trials. He did go off at 4.7 in this race, Yoda's Choice. Didn't have the best of runs either, Yoda's Choice. The race didn't really pan out for him. From Barry one, he's going to get a lot, uh, a lot better run. So... Yeah, I'm going to put uh, definitely put uh, Yoda's choice in. I think he's a, he's a, a definitely a chance in the race. And the country dancer goes in as well. Uh, he, but another one, he's got to overcome a wide draw. And uh, the track work around Solar Partner has looked good. The stats at Happy Valley over the 1,200 in this grade are good. Yeah, so uh, he's, he's been working really well, this horse. Uh, he's coming back from three runs at Chartin to Happy Valley. Uh, last time he was on this rating of 60, he was ridden by Hugh Bowman and he won. And Hugh jumps aboard first time since that win. Easy as that. Go put him on top. I think he's in the ready to go solar partner. So he's coming out of some strong um, Chartin races behind Wunderbar, Kaying Rising. I think this would be a lot easier for him. He's on top to beat uh, country dancer Yoda's choice. And Super Eagle does go in, Mark. He goes in on a minor line. One, eight, six, and nine.
very relieved to see that fall. But uh, it is sold a partner to win and he has carried 135 pounds to victory in the past too. Feature race is race number seven. It is the Kuhn Chung Bus Cup and it's a class three over the 1200 metres with an inform watch buddy at the top of the book. Celestial Colours trial well since his last start, 11th made an abnormal breathing noise too during that race. Golden Empire's a last start winner, extra seven pounds on his back. Golden Title and Good Luck Win have just their second race day appearances. And Golden Long, one on debut, had two starts since and ran second behind Super Eagle, of course, who we see in race number six, but he is into class three, is Golden Long Ball. You know, there's no real leader in this race. I thought uh, Celestial Colours uh, can go forward from a wide draw with Hugh Bowman aboard, go on with it. The, the query's Koholo Angel, what do they do with him? He's got the 10 pound claim, he's drawn barrier number one, so maybe they'll try and lead with him. Uh, Golden Empire won't be too far away. Golden Long can go forward uh, from his draw. Watch Buddy will have to go back, I think, from his draw. Extra weight on his back this week, Watch Buddy, but nothing's been stopping him lately, and here's Harry Bentley talking to Nick to see if that is likely to continue. Harry, uh, Wednesday night racing off to Happy Valley we go. You've got a, a pretty decent book of rides, but one that really does stand out is in the seventh, Watch Buddy. He's a horse you've, you've got a really good association with, and he's won his last two. Yeah, that's right. He's a horse that's uh, in fantastic form, and he's been ultra consistent throughout his career. Obviously, he's going up again in, in the weights, but, um, yeah, we couldn't be coming into the race better. That form's really looking uh, pretty decent now. I mean, the horse he beat two starts ago was Raging Blizzard. He's won since, and, um, and Healthy Healthy has, uh, has sort of run well as well. So the form's certainly solid. Yeah, it is solid, and he's, he's a horse that never wins by overly far, but he, he always just does enough. And uh, he's extremely game, just sticks his head out to the line. How much more demanding is this going to be for a horse like him, Harry? Because he's, he's obviously got an upwardly mobile profile, four wins from ten, but the fact he's got to carry a decent weight, he's up a, a few pounds, of course, it, it's going to be that bit tougher, isn't it? Yeah, there are a few factors uh, counting against him this time. He's been a horse that's been quite fortunate with his draws um, in the past, and obviously we're going to be um, starting from gate nine, which makes life a little bit harder, um, especially the fact he's got more weight on his back. So we'll have to slightly go to the drawing board and... Uh, and, and see, what, see what we want to do with him, um, whether or not we just push forward and try and get him into a handy spot. Um, I'll speak to Ricky more in depth with that, but yeah, there are a few factors to contend with. And how has he been since then, Harry? I noticed you have had a sit on him since his last one. Yeah, I sat on him a couple of times and he feels great. Um, he's extremely generous horse in his work. He always um, does his bit and he, he feels fantastic, so I couldn't be happier with his form. Uh, your form is very good as well. Tenth in the Premiership now, Harry. Double across the weekend. Nice trophy to collect as well. Things are going great. Really, really good. Couldn't be happy with uh, the form I'm in at the moment. And I've got some nice rides coming up. So I just hope I can keep that momentum and um, I'll be very happy. Did I read somewhere that uh, that was a double, of course? But uh, you've ridden a few doubles now this season, haven't you? Yeah, I think uh, someone said it was my sixth of the season. So uh, obviously you've got to be very happy with that. Um, come, come in pairs. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully there are more to come. We've got a lot, lot left of the season. Hey, you've got some nice rides, Harry, just on this guy. Just a quick overview. Obviously, there's this guy, Watch Buddy, but you've also got Atomic Force, who you know well. You've got a nice newcomer for Douglas White in Ace Power. So you must go to the races full of confidence this Wednesday night. Yeah, of course. When, when you've got a, a full book as well, that's always nice, but especially when there are a few nice highlights in amongst them. Um, as you mentioned, Atomic Force, he ran a mighty race to finish second and narrowly denied in the last stride last time. So, yeah, we've, we've got some nice chances on, on the night and um, just need to make them count. That's Harry talking. Watch, buddy. Paul, we're going to talk about a number of these other runners in the race, starting with the class riser in Golden Long, who runs second in this race. So he carries 120 pounds this week, 15 less than what he did when he ran second behind Super Eagle, ran fourth behind Beauty Infinity. Of course, he's come out again since that race and bolted up in the last last week. Yeah, look, he goes up one point for for the second, and look, he's he goes up a grade without winning. I, I, I just get, get, get a little bit wary of horses that do that. Uh, he has had the three starts. He has won one of them. He's drawn nicely in barrier four with a lightweight, and Super Eagle is in an easier race uh, in the previous. So look, I'm going to put him on, but I, I just a bit wary of him coming up without winning. California deeply, Paul. A thousand metres has been all of his racing here in Hong Kong. He's run home a couple of times lately from well back in the field. Is the 1200 what he's been crying out for? Well, it looks like it, the way he races. He's, um, he's won over 1100 metres as a two-year-old. So he, there is showing a bit of stamina there earlier on. 
Uh, you can see him finishing. He always finishes off his races strongly. Uh, he's lost a little bit of his zip. Uh, we've seen him do this a few times. I think the 1200 is probably what he needs. So hopefully he's a decent price. A couple of uh, trials to look at before we get your selections. And we'll start with the grey Koholo Angel. You said he was the question mark horse in the race. Gets a £10 claim. Draws Barry number one. Missed a start last time. On that, might they not look to bustle him too much and take that trial? Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. I think they might try to. I mean, if he misses the start, he's going to be out the back, isn't he? Uh, look, he, he's, this was an easy... Look, no one's really moving too too hard in this race, so it was a real nice, easy trial for him uh, leading into it, and he did what he had to do. He wasn't let go at all. So uh, he's only had the one go at Happy Valley, and he ran well, so there's, he obviously doesn't mind the course. And he placed in that race. That uh, start he missed was on the 13th of January with a blood abnormality. Uh, Celestial Colours, this was a good trial from him. He was three wide the entire way. It wasn't the strongest field granted, but it was more the look about the trial than perhaps the opposition, wasn't it? Yeah, look, it's a clear excuse last time with an abnormal breathing noise. This trial showed me that uh, that obviously wasn't an, a permanent problem because he's, he's, he's trialled really well wide all the way. So hopefully, um, you know, if he can get to the front from, uh, from his draw, then uh, he's definitely going to feature, I think, this horse. So he goes in the numbers for me. It was a nice trial, as you mentioned. He's a member of the Jamie Richards stable. Hugh Bowman will ride him from barrier number seven. Just had the two starts so far at Happy Valley. Your selections. Going to go with the five on top here, California Deeply, uh, up to the 1,200. Hopefully he's an each-way price. So he's on top. Watch Buddy has to carry the weight, but he's in great form at the moment. Celestial Colours and Golden Long and on a minor line, 5129. And that is race number seven. It is the first leg of the late treble. Race number eight, class four event is the second last and the distance is 1,650 metres. D-Star is on the class drop. Invincible Missile gets a five pound claim for Alfie Chan. Sure, Joyful's racing well, as is Cordyceps one, but he carries an extra 11 pounds for that last start win. Starship 80 is holding his form. Strongest boy has placed three from four course and distance. We've got Rod Honourable, who's a six time track and distance winner. And United Endeavours comes up in grade. He's still eligible for the bottom or the the top of class five he's in the bottom of class four after beating brilliant pioneer last time who leads here paul cordyceps one sure joyful and united endeavors on the pace yeah there's not uh, not too much speed i think cordyceps one he stole it last time with some really slow sectionals he might try and do something similar in this race i think uh, can't go Wong can get himself into a nice enough position take action strongest boys drawn better uh, starship 80 and the rest get back uh, right honorable runs his best race getting back Invincible Missile D Star goes back from a wide draw. Chiang Fat and Poe on Wade draw wide. I'm sure Joyful is racing so well, Paul. He's had a maintenance trial since this one, just a, a very quiet trial it was for him, but he gets to Happy Valley on a Wednesday night. He's got a win and four placings from his last five starts. Indeed, this season, he's missed top three once from seven goes. So consistent. He's taken a while um, to come right, the five-year-old by Tarzino, but he's had a really good season, as you mentioned. He gets a check every start. Uh, finished off this race uh, really nicely here once again. Just uh, failed to win. I mean, the horse that wins this race, Noble Pursuit, they were talking about a derby for him. So he comes out of quite a strong form race. He was, and he was, of course, the reserve for the Classic Cup on the weekend at Noble Pursuit. Cordyceps won, pinched it last time, as you said. Is there a chance that he could be able to do that, even with the higher weight this week? I think there is. Uh, look, it definitely is, because uh, there's, I, don't think, I can't see where the challenges are going to come for him. And uh, I think this could be a pace orientated race for Shaw Joyful sitting on his sort of hind quarters and these two fighting it out, um, Shaw Joyful and Cordyceps won. Look, if they don't take him on, this is what can happen. You can see him uh, winning easy. And he had, looked like he had plenty in hand in this race. He's won and won that very, very yeah. well, has Cordyceps won. Our final replay is a rather busy horse in Starship 80. This is him running third last time behind Kimberley. It was class four, so same grade as the race he runs in on Wednesday night. Happy Valley hasn't been his best form place either. On that, are you going to risk him? I am, especially back to the 1650 as well. One thing about him, he's a fit horse. He's had 13 starts already this season. This will be his 14th start. And Look, he runs on nicely, but he was running on here over 2,000 metres. Back to Happy Valley over 1650. I don't know if it's ideal for him. Okay, so we'll wait till he gets back to a longer trip at Char 10 on what he's done previously around Starship 80.
There's a few chances outside of them as well, but uh, who do you like? I'm going to go, I think it's going to be pace orientated this race, so I'm going to put the two that are on the pace, which is sure joyful to beat Cordyceps 1. A Poe on way, he's going to need some luck from a wide draw, but Happy Valley, his best runs have been at Happy Valley and can't go Wong in there as well. He's run a couple of fourths, so he's caught the eye. He's starting to get there as well. 3, 4, 9 and 10. Paul with the Hugh Bowman and Ricky Yu combination. Paul giving Ricky a number of chances throughout the program too on Wednesday night. Happy Valley's final race is the ninth on Wednesday night. Post time for it is 10 minutes to 11 o'clock and happy goal for last start when it got there by a nose and goes up four pounds in weight. Tegepi's on the class drop. Lyrical Motion, senior rider on board, so extra seven pounds on his back. Sergeant Pepper goes to the 1200. Team Happy has had five trials ahead of his debut. Better draw for Mr Fox, so too for Happy Soul. Joyful Lice has placed his only time at the Valley. And Hero Star, possible leader, Paul. We'll find out shortly as the speed map appears. Yep, barrier 12 straight across. I think he can get across. Joyful Life will try and come across from his wide draw and he might try and get outside him. Team Happy is a, a debut runner, but he has shown a bit of pace in this trial, especially at Happy Valley. Sergeant Pepper's drawn ideally in barrier one. He can sit him behind. Happy Golf last start winner won't be too far away either. Nick is here for our last interview on the Race by Race preview. It's with Derek Long and Joyful Life. Derek, Joyful Life, uh, your mount in the final race on Wednesday night. He's only had the one run here at Happy Valley. That was last time, but it, it was a really good run. Yes, he did one very good. You know, your first time at Happy Valley, so he was a little bit fresh for him, a little bit new for him, so he did look around. But good enough, he made him more relaxed in doing the race. Uh, he wasn't too aggressive. So he can finish good. Yeah. How did you feel he handled the track, Derek? Obviously, it's, it's a very different track, isn't it, to um, to shout in and obviously all weather racing. Did you feel that he handled Happy Valley well? Well, I think last time he only first time there, not even trial. So the handle, I think, he's handled pretty well. Yeah. He's got gate ten, Derek. Now, obviously, less than ideal around Happy Valley. Um, given his running style, he was sort of close to the pace last time. How, how do you try and overcome ten? Well, you always have an outside draw with Ricky Yu and we try to stay positive, make sure he try to get handy. If good, get the cover and try to let him relax, switch off and want him strong. They've left him on his, his same mark as well of 46. He's only got a, a lightweight of 121. So I guess when you look at the race on paper, he, he certainly has his chance here, doesn't he? Yes. Well, you're always there. He just still a bit green. And he just keeps improving. Every every time you can see him improving and learn something. And after, after the last one, I think he just keeps improving. Yeah, he does look like he's doing just that. As for uh, for you, Derek, on a personal note, you're going to head off to Japan very soon. Victor, the winner, uh, is due to run there. That must that must be exciting for you. Yes, it's a great opportunity. So I want to thank you for the owner and the trainer support. And today we're giving him trial, easy trial. He was trial good. We can find a cover, let him learn something, and he's doing pretty good. Have you? Did you feel that he's improved from his uh, his big win last time, Derek? Well, I wouldn't say just improve. Well, with fitness and mental, he's ready. He's there yet. Yeah, he's there already. So just first time try to go to Japan, the horse, and left her. He just try to see any different for him. I will go there on Tuesday. To get up him on the on the glass, so we will see how he feels on, on, over there. And um, for you, Derek, I mean, I, I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, have, have you ridden abroad? Have you had much exposure to, to racing outside of Hong Kong? Yes, I went to Australia, New Zealand, France, England, but Dubai, Singapore, Macau. Yeah, I've been mean, quite a few. Uh, so especially in England, we go like uphill, downhill, left, right in, in this one race. So yeah, some experience, and now internet is so popular. You can see the jockey cam, you can see everything online. So it's quite can make me more a lot preparation and more confidence. Derek Long there talking joyful life, and Victor the winner progressing forward towards Japan. Winning form for us though, Paul, in a great finish last time with the Happy Golf just getting up to see out Alloy King High Rise Soldier.
He's an eight-year-old now. His form, his last two, hasn't been quite as good as it was three or four starts ago. No, and he's drawn 11, so he needs sort of everything to go well for him. Look, it was a nice run here from Happy Golf. He's only gone up four pounds for this win, albeit just narrowly. Uh, he finished off finished off really well. He's drawn nicely in barrier four. I'm going to put him in on the minor line. I don't know if he can put two together, but it was a nice enough win from him. It was indeed. Lyrical Motion's been racing well all season. He hasn't missed uh, a spot amongst the money. Uh, well, top four actually hasn't missed the entire season. Like a few horses, Sure Joyful and All Beauty, etc. have had good seasons as well. Hugh Bowman jumps aboard this week, so he'll have to carry £130. Yeah, but uh, he's got a senior rider on now as well. So as such, look, I'm going to I'm going to go with him, actually. I think, he, as you mentioned, he's been so consistent all season. This has been his, his year, Lyrical Motion. He's a six-year-old now, and uh, look, he, he finished off this race really strongly. He got buffeted about there as well, just had to balance back up and finished off nicely for third. So, um, look, I think he's a good chance. He was entitled to uh, not go on with it when he caught that uh, decent buffer, but he certainly did good enough in third place. Flying Phantom, Paul. He's been back to the trial since beaten favourite when fifth behind Super Eagle. Zach sticks for John Size and he's just nosed out by Casa Papa in this trial. Yeah, he just had the four starts. Uh, as he's quite dissident, so I, at, in time I wonder if he, he'll want further, but he's been racing really well over the 1,200 metres. A nice second behind Crystal Powerful, Zach aboard. So yeah, he goes in for me. And I, I like the way he finished off this trial as well. So look, if, uh, there is the opportunity, I, I think, for him to maybe um, have a run on the all-weather, the way he's been galloping on it. So that's another possibility. So they've got plenty of options with this horse, I think. And he's in amongst your selections, as is Lyrical Motion. Who else fills the top four? Yeah, so Lyrical Motion on top to beat uh, Flying Phantom. I, I see that three to beat seven. A joyful Life, he'll need a bit of luck from his... Uh, wide draw and then uh, Happy Golf goes in on a minor line. Three, seven, ten and one in the last. That is Happy Valley 640 post time for the first of nine racing takes place on the B course.